What about this GDH test? Tell me more about that. So that's uh, glutamate dehydrogenase. Test originally developed in the 1980s uh, was called the latex test and uh, was terribly insensitive. And it, and it was thought originally that it was detecting toxin A, but they actually made a mistake and they're detecting a, a separate enzyme, this GDH enzyme. And then this test was converted over to a, a new uh, platform, which is much more sensitive, enzyme immunoassay. And now it turns out that you can use the test as kind of a, a preliminary detection of the presence of C. diff in the stool, uh, because this GDH enzyme is uh, quite specific for C. diff. Uh, and it's a fairly inexpensive way to detect the presence of C. diff. Now the problem with it is it detects toxigenic and non-toxigenic C. diff, both. Oh, great. Yeah, so, <laughs> and, and it turns out 25 to 40% of what's seen in hospital patients is non-toxigenic C. diff. So what, what's an algorithm here? If I, you know, I was hoping you were gonna tell me, oh, GDH is the promised land, the gold standard. Get it, positive, treat it. I'm not hearing that. No, you, you uh, don't want to interpret it that way because a GDH test is just halfway to the end point. And, okay. and you need to confirm the GDH with the presence of toxin in the stool. And that toxin test can be another enzyme immunoassay for toxin itself, or if there's a discrepancy between the GDH and the toxin test, you can reflex over to doing PCR at that point to be sure that it's a toxigenic stain. You do need confirmation of toxin in the stool or the presence of a toxigenic strain when you use so GDH. So GDH is like a screening test. Okay. And then you confirm a positive with a toxin test. So if we're gonna do an algorithm, you can get GDH, cover the waterfront. If that's positive, if I hear you correctly, now, you are on the hook for doing more. So, to, so, so typ typically, that's called a two-step test, and typically, yeah. to save time and so forth, typically the first step would be the GDH and the toxin test. If the GDH is positive and the toxin is positive, the patient has C. diff, and okay. if both of them are negative, it's believed that the patient does not have C. diff. But as Dale said, if the GDH is positive but the toxin test is negative, then you refer to a PCR test. Okay, now what about this nucleic acid amplification test, the so-called NAT, there's two A's in there, NAT test, where does that fit? So that's a new term for PCR, Got it. nucleic acid amplification test. Why can't they just keep the names the I'm, same? I'm not entirely sure. Are they out there just to confuse the hell out of us? Probably Dale's Probably. recommendation. <laughs> Is that uh, your fault? Is that what's going on? So those tests were developed in the 90s and, and became popular in, in the 2000s because the enzyme immunoassay was insensitive. So the concern was it was missing C. diff. Patients were being harmed. We were spreading C. diff around the hospital based on a false negative test. So PCR, better test, more sensitive. All right. But now there's, there's several studies suggesting maybe it's too sensitive. <laughs> and again, the point that Dale made is it doesn't distinguish between toxigenic and non-toxigenic strains. So you need the GDH, you need the NAT, what else do you need? Well, uh, the new guideline uh, is dividing patients based on their clinical symptoms. And a lot of laboratories today are accepting every specimen that comes through the door, uh, and, but they will screen them to be sure that the stool is liquid or unformed but beyond that, they have no control over what's being sent. So somebody could have one loose stool be submitted to the laboratory. And the majority of them, most laboratories, if they're lucky, will have a 10% positive C. diff test rate. So that means 90% of what's being sent is probably not C. diff. So if you can do a better job of clinically identifying the patients by, say, requiring that they not be on laxatives or other common drugs that cause diarrhea, and that they uh, had at least three stools within 24 hours or less, the unformed stools, then you can use a test like uh, a nucleic acid amplification test or PCR, which most hospitals are currently doing, and have a more confidence that it actually represents C. diff okay. and it's positive. If you don't do that, if you do the, the usual testing without any discrimination of what patient is tested, then the guideline recommends that you include a specific toxin test as part of this algorithm. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to get into the weeds. There's something called LAMP out there, and I don't even know what the acronym stands for. But is there, is there a distinction here between plain PCR and whatever this LAMP is, or is, is, it, is it useful? It's, it's a, a different 
methodology for detecting the toxin gene, basically. And the reason it isn't called PCR, so there's PCR and there's LAMP, together they constitute NAT. And that's why we had to use the NAT term, and because PCR wasn't sufficient. Uh, <laughs> One uh, A was not enough. That's right. Add that's an right. A in there. So, um, I know you touched on this, but let's, let's see if we can't really just spell this out very clearly. Interpreting the laboratory results. You send off this battery of tests, they all come back. Can you parse this out very simply, ABCs? That's what I would do. So, first of all, I'm not going to test anyone who does not have unexplained diarrhea. And so that's absolutely a requirement, and the diarrhea should be sufficient. Unless, again, as we discussed, they're very, very sick and may have illus. So a patient with un unexplained diarrhea who has at least lo three loose stools, um, I'll send a stool uh, test. If I have a two-step uh, test available to me, uh, I'm going to get a result saying the GDH was negative, the patient doesn't have C. diff, or the GDH was positive and the toxin was positive, the patient does have C. diff, or the GDH was positive but the toxin test was negative, in that case the lab is going to do the NAT test. If the NAT test is positive, then I know that the patient has toxigenic C. diff in their cone. Now, by the time the test come back to me, if I'm in a hospital and if it takes two or three hours, it's probably, the timing is probably not going to make a big difference. But if I'm working in a community and if it took a day or two, and at that time the patient doesn't have diarrhea anymore, I would say, well, you know, the symptoms are gone, there's nothing to treat. But if the patient still has diarrhea and the confirmatory test is positive, I would probably end up treating it. Okay. How am I going to treat it? I'm going to use the new version of the guidelines. We're, we're gonna go on to treatment in just a bit. Uh, and I, want, I do want to provide the caveat that all of you provided to me, which is two to three days go by in the community, there is no more diarrhea, but the patient has to look okay. If the patient's looking sicker and more toxic, then all bets are off and you're gonna to go to the hospital anyway, right? That's absolutely the case.